and I am pleased to be joined by the one and only Jamie Lemon. Oh, there's only one of me. Thanks, buddy. Now. There's only one. Th- thanks for coming along. How are you doing? Yes, I'm very good. I'm I'm uh, in thick in the uh, lead up to celebrations for my 40th birthday. I've got yeah, so that's tomorrow, isn't it? it the, yeah, that's right. You've done your research. Yes, the real day is tomorrow, but the official birthday is on uh, the the 12th. I'm going to have a big party, and I've been making a giant wooden cake. And I've been uh, bedazzling okay. a white jock strap. It's all going on. <laughs> it's going to be like the last days of ancient Rome. Amazing. Uh, so a, wo- a wooden cake. Is someone planning to jump out of that, or or are you jumping out of it? No, that's... no, no, no one knows it's your birthday. You're just gonna. There's just gonna be this cake in a room, and you're just gonna be like, "What's up?" <laughs> that's a good point. I had to. I had to build it um, so it would fit in the car. So it's a small. It's not uh. big enough for me to go. It's just big enough for my wife, who is a professional uh, stripper. She's going to jump out of cake, surprise everyone. But that's going to be after the Beatles have been on. So ah, okay. the Peter first, then the Beatles, then a girl jumps out of a cake. And then there's like an immense disco, possibly a, sc- a midnight screening of Disney's Aladdin. Who can say? You just got all the all the boxes are being ticked there, aren't they? Yeah, Something yeah. for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, uh, obviously, first off, I see you are inside the Lenman lair, which is perfect. Yeah. Is it, it was the, um, I believe, the uh, uh, Luke's... Uh, lightsabers behind you, isn't it? It is good. Good. There it is. It's the it's the Jedi lightsaber. My favourite of um, the three original films is Jedi. You can pop yeah, good shot. You like? Uh, no, I, don't, I don't think anyone will. <laughs> well, no, oh, maybe Empire Strikes Back. Actually, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you know the thing with Empire is it feels like a middle bit to me. Do you know what I mean? It hasn't mm. really got an end. It's definitely got some good stuff, but it's very middly. The thing I like about Jedi, which is not what this radio show is about, it's about my record, but. Jedi. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> cool Luke, do you know what I mean? In the first one, he's like a little sand boy. He's like an yeah. idiot. In the second one, he goes through a bit of trauma. He doesn't grow up. And then by the third one, he is a fucking Jedi. Ultimate. Oh, oh, yeah. Robot <laughs> and he's fucking sick as balls. And that's <laughs> what I like Jedi the best because of Luke. Yeah. Didn't that, that's that's fair. Solo has turned into a ridiculous TV clown. It's Luke. Yeah. I'm interested, you know? Yeah, absolutely fair. And and you already know that like he's got a sister then and you, you forget about the time that they sort of kissed and like that that was a long that was a long time ago. A sister by mistake. Come on. Give the yeah. <laughs> Um so obviously uh, yeah, I I watched the um Ticketmaster thing that around your house last was it last year or twenty twenty? I think it's so, 20. Wow. Yeah, so that's why I, I was like, oh, I know, I know, I know what's behind you. I know what's on the wall. It's the other stuff. I've had some new additions since then. But I, I was going to say, have you, have you um, had any any new stuff in? Many, many, many. I don't want to risk moving the laptop because it's balanced precariously on my uh, sound. <laughs> but I, yeah, during the first part of this year, I was very, very bored and bought a lot of stuff. I got myself the WWF wrestling ring. And I got oh. Legion of Doom shoulder pads, the foam, the wear. Oh, that is amazing! I also got um, the playset the from the Devolution Chamber from the very badly received Mario Brothers movie from the early from the mid. I watched that a couple of months ago. The one with um, oh, John what's his name? Mo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I watched that a few months ago. I love it. I got all the toys. I got the chamber, and I got the Alien Queen Hive playset from America, and I got the Dick Tracy uh, Big Boy Caprice's uh, car. I bought a lot of stuff in the early 2022 because I was nothing was happening. I'd finished my record. I was waiting for everything else to happen. So I just what else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna do? Buy big toys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know I went up in my uh, loft uh, I don't know, last year or something. I found uh, an old shoebox full of all my old like wrestling toys and stuff. Wow. Uh, like, uh, yeah, and I, there was there was some that like you had like The Rock and stuff like that. And then I find like someone uh, we got from like car boot sales like yeah. back in the back in the nineties. So you had like um, Hulk Hogan. Um, I think I had Animal. What one of the? Yes, nice. Yeah, I got yeah. Animal up there. He's part of the team. Lod. Road Warriors, fantastic! Yeah, loads, of, loads of them. It's all the classics, and uh, but obviously, where, where I was, I was a kid at the time as well. Like some of them have got like little handmade like belts and stuff like that, where I just got a bit of cardboard. That's cool. That's so cool. And do you know what? That's the thing that I quite like. A lot of these toy collectors. I know we haven't really talked about my record yet. We will get there. But <laughs> a lot of toy collectors they only like um, pristine stuff, or sometimes you even get people that only get stuff in, in the boxes. You know. Yeah. And and the, the pristine stuff, the stuff that's you know as new, that goes for you know hundreds and hundreds of pounds. That never really bothered me. I actually quite like a toy 
that has got maybe a finger snapped off or, or a little card yeah. or it, I, that you can see it's been played with. I like the history of the object. So plus they're cheaper. So I always yeah. <laughs> step under the glass case with the ones that are like five million pounds. Hulk Hogan still has original hair. You know, <laughs> I go for the little the the box underneath that's got like two peach, you know, and one of them yeah. like an ear screwed <laughs> off by you someone because they got a history yeah yeah also i suppose the the ones in boxes and things people are keeping those to sell them but like i I, I, like i don't think i'd ever want to sell them like well that's true that's true and i don't know what's going to happen to all my stuff at some point maybe i might just get bored at some point and get rid of it or i sincerely doubt it in fact i'm having a bigger room built so i can fit more stuff in but uh, you never know what may happen i might get hit on the head the side of solar pile of shit no, I, I don't think so. I think you, you, there'll always be a little bit. There'll be always something there. <laughs> I did see, um, uh, obviously, the Dalek as well. Is that have you fixed that up now? Yeah, the Dalek again. He's the Dalek is just out of vision to the yeah. side. Isn't it? When I first when I first bought the Dalek, I think it's on the the Ruben DVD. You can see it is because I watched that again yesterday, and I was like, oh shit, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Since then, I think that was maybe two thousand and five. We shot that. So in the intervening yeah. fifteen years, twenty years. I have spruced him right up, and he's now in tip-top condition. I changed him from a 70s-era Dalek to a 60s-era Dalek, and I got some new bits for him, and I've been working hard on him. So, yeah, he's uh, completed his journey. Excellent. He is at his fin- in his final form. Mm. Perfect. Um, so we will we will move on to, to music and things like that. But um, firstly, this isn't actually the first time we've spoken. I don't know if... Uh, well, I say spoken. So um, at 2000 Trees 2019 in the um, the uh, signing tent. Yes. So I was right at the front. Came, came to the front of you. I was. I was the, I was the first person in that queue. Because oh I think I, I, w- I walked past just as Frank Turner was finishing. And I was like... Perfect timing, yeah. uh, and uh, I just remember walking up, and I was still. I did the. I did the classic of uh, just deer in headlights. Uh, hi, 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 Jamie. I'm a big fan. Just didn't didn't really say anything, but there we go. But that's, <laughs> I mean, who's coming to that signing? Who's indifferent? You know, who's yeah. queuing up and be like, hi, Jamie. I don't really care either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, hey, yeah, you're right. Like, what's up? <laughs> it's an average record. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Uh, it, was, it was good it was a good time um anyway we are obviously here to talk music um and your record obviously uh first off you've had a little bit of a lineup change as well with uh, jen coming in on uh, on guitar yes that's true yeah she's um she's bringing a whole lot of magic to the thing my sound engineer jerry said it was it was more dynamic he said it's a more dynamic show now jen's involved <laughs> i mean that can only be a plus can't it yeah yeah i wanted yeah. i'm not sure i wanted did I want the show to get better with Jen? No, there's, there is no better. I don't really believe in better or worse. I just believe in different. Different, yeah. Yeah. So, so how, how did that sort of come about? I, I know, obviously, um, she, you'll be familiar with her from false advertising. Um, she also did that piano rendition of Race Car on uh, the Station Trees oh, yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> I did forgot, you forget about that? <laughs> I forgot about that. We did. We did. I, she'd sent me some of those recordings like a long time ago, and then she did it for yeah. truth, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, I think Guy and John were quite impressed by that. I sent it to them. Um, no, I, you know, I've known Jen for quite a long time. Obviously, she came on the second Len Mania when Len Mania was a tour for the second Len Mania. We did a few dates yeah. and then we did Len Mania at Trees, which is where that signing must have been. Um, yeah, yeah. Then she came in and she played piano on Separation Event as well. She did a song, yes. with Me and Jacko. So that sort of lineup of the band is actually not without precedent. We'd, we'd done that before. We'd done it at the start of 2021. So it was a natural... Um, evolution to say hey why don't you come and do this on the road and fill in the guitar parts i was hoping she could do some piano parts as well i'm not sure we're going to quite get there because you know we've only done a few shows with the guitar parts maybe for the next record we might expand it out to some piano but she is multi-talented and does everything really is, yeah <laughs> she's been directing all my videos and taking all my photos as well yes so i've seen we relied on her for this campaign i'd be absolutely screwed without her well and jack <laughs> you know everyone is a vital cog that if they fell away i just crumble um i i uh, obviously saw jen just before i came to your southampton show the other week i don't know if you saw the uh, only bold guy there at the front Here no i, I didn't but that show was yeah sick, right? that really it was really good yeah so, so f- funny enough um i i, I didn't um realize because i didn't think you're playing anywhere near me because i'm in bristol so i was like oh i guess i guess i'll wait till next year or something like that um and then i think it's about 20 past five i finished work at half five about 20 past five i saw you pop up with oh playing southampton i'm like I, I got nothing on. I could drive to Southampton. It's wow. only two hours. 
That's so, the, like, that's why we do those last minute posts on social media. Exactly. Now you, I wouldn't have been there. Right. God damn it. Now I have to do one every day. <laughs> I'm so glad you came along. And I'm so glad you were there for such a great show. Yeah. Wonderful. It was, so, yeah, it was such a good show and quite a small venue as well, which is really nice. Like, I guess, yeah. I mean, the, the you know, the, the good thing about someone like the joiners is that it can feel full. You know, I've played that place where it's been absolutely chocolate, like right to the door. And it can get quite uncomfortable. And but you can have like 100 people in it or 150, whatever it was on that night. And it could still feel pretty cool, you know, so it's it's a multi sized venue. It's a bit like King Tut's in Glasgow. Yeah, you know, I've heard that's a really cool venue. A crowd and it, and it sort of weirdly adapts to how many people are in there. It's great. Um, obviously, uh, I saw Jen just before then as well, because uh, I've not seen her in about, about a year or something. And I know she was quite nervous for that because uh, I think that was your first headline show, wasn't it, with her in? Oh yeah, I guess it was. Yeah, yeah. she. Yeah, I, know, she, I know she was nervous. But. Yeah, which is weird because she's such a professional. But then I guess you know, playing with your own band and playing with someone else's band is a different kettle of fish, isn't it? You know, I've only. Um, I guess I I played in someone else's band. Mm, well, I've been a guesty on a few occasions. Yeah, I was nervous when I went up with Will uh, with Black Peaks. But that's because I was at the front of it. I wasn't nervous when I was drumming for Caretaker because I was behind a drum kit. I don't know. I don't really get that nervous about my own shows anymore. I was nervous about Black Peaks, I have to say. There's a lot of lyrics to remember. Whew. Yeah, I suppose when it's not your music as well, you're sort of like, I got, I got, like. There you go. I think that's the difference, maybe. Yeah. Help these guys out. <laughs> Well, obviously, with with the um, obviously you've got you've been with Jack for for a few years now. Obviously, Jen's come in. Do they have much influence on the sort of like the the writing side of things? I assume you do like everything basically. But do they sort of sort of say, oh, this might sound a bit better, or or is it all you? They get slapped down. <laughs> no, no, that's not quite true. Every now and then, <laughs> every now and then, I might ask. I'll be like. Does this sound cool? And they both go, yeah, totally cool. Because they know which side their bread's buttered, right? I'm paying. <laughs> so they got to agree. It's a bit like a captive audience. Um, in terms of writing, you know, I write uh, everything myself. But um, when we do get a spare half hour or maybe an hour-ish at the end of a rehearsal, if I feel like we've got all the stuff that we're going to play at the show to a, a sufficient standard and there's no point just going over and over it, maybe I'll say, hey, do you want to try out a new one? Something that's buzzing around my noggin. And so at, at that point, I would say, Jack, I play someone like this and Jen hit these chords. It's still me calling the shots, really. But in that, in those instances, you know, they're of great assistance to me. They're like a huge help to the writing process. Right? They, they help you to vision it like in exactly. physical form sort of thing. Yeah, you want to say visualize and then you remember it's music. Audio... <laughs> Yeah. Audialize? I don't know. It's... Because there's only so far you can go in your head or on your computer or home or whatever. So you need to get in there with the room. And, you know, I, I actually had a, a several sessions writing this new record with lots of different drummers to try and help me get the drum parts down because I, I knew I was going to be drumming them myself. And so I needed to hear how they would work with the guitar. So very often I'll, I'll get other people in just to, just as a soundboard, you know, mm. and that's a huge help. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can imagine. Um, well, I'll see the new album, uh, The Atheist, isn't it? Is out on the 25th of November. Yes, so, not too long now. A couple of weeks. Weeks, something like that. Are you, are you excited? Uh, do you know what? I am excited. I can't really... I feel like my birthday... <laughs> it's <laughs> such a big birthday. is this, like, yeah. immense roadblock between me and looking ahead at the album. So once I've got this week out of the way, then I'll be able to refocus my sights... And I've still got like half of a deconstructed wooden cake up in the spare room that I'm going to need to paint as soon as I get <laughs> off. So I can't really think about it too much. But come Sunday, when all my birthday has died down, then yes, I will be laser focused and absolutely um, thrilled for the coming of that record. Yeah, for everyone to hear. I keep forgetting when you make a record, you get the mixes back, you listen to it 50 times, you get the masters back, you listen to them 50 times, you forget you forget that no one else has heard this. No one outside of my house has heard this. I'm so used to all of these songs and my band, you know, we're playing a lot of the record live and you went to the show, you know, there was like it's... nine songs off the record. There was. And I forget. No one knows these songs, man. No one's heard it. It's old news to me, but no, it's still with two weeks away from it being out. So I find that hard to remember. You, you did have, um, I think one of the songs, you, did you say one of the songs was from Devolver Time? 
there's one song I remember you saying, oh, this we sort of did around, I think it's Devolver or, or Muscle Memory, and then you're like, and I, I brought it back to to this. I'm sure. Yeah, well, I think I think there's a, there's a song called My Anchor, which I recorded for Muscle Memory originally, mm. and Deep Down. I recorded them both uh, during the Muscle Memory sessions, but they weren't right. My, my Anchor was written around Muscle Memory time. Deep Down is from much further back. Deep Down is from Ruben Times. Oh, really? Oh man, all the songs. Um, I did that single, Television Is Not Your Life. I wrote that before the first Ruben record. A, a lot of these songs, if you think, hey, that sounds a bit like Ruben, it's because it is Ruben, you know, <laughs> that I never managed to get on a record. So they'll all find their way. It just It's just about waiting for the right project for them to sit with. And finally, here came this sort of mellow indie project where they could all sit together. Yeah, I was thinking that because obviously you've got quite a diverse range of like you like you, you can go from something really heavy and then to something a bit a bit lighter so I was, I was wondering when you when you write stuff like that is it a case of you just write a music and then you just sit on that one until the opportunity comes up then yeah they all got, i've got at any one time i'll have four or five different sort of pots if you like uh, where i'm putting the songs so the songs come out in any weird order any weird shape and size and i go hmm, where does that belong and i'll find a little one of the pots that goes into does it go into the like the extreme math core pot does it go into the pirate opera pot does it go into the like bizarre aggressive hip-hop pot <laughs> i can't wait for the next album <laughs> you'll never guess you'll never guess <laughs> uh and and it finds its way it finds its way and and there for a long time there was like a mellow indie pot and i was just waiting for that to you know have like 10 12 songs in it and for it to be the right time as well and that time is is now um, obviously, the uh, the artwork as well is uh, quite something. Is um, obviously your head as an island. Yeah. So wh where is that <laughs> where is that come about? Well, that was because my friend um, Parkin, a very successful uh, illustrator, he uh, he does a lot of fantastic stuff. There was a period when he was doing a lot of maps for a lot of travel journals, okay. um, and I just love them. You know, I like a good map, and I like those maps where it's. You have like the outsized, you look at a map of France and there's a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And obviously that's not the scale, you know, <laughs> but I like that. And you have like, I don't know, the bridge at Montmartre or something. I don't know. A bit if there's... more visually appealing, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's sort of like a fun outsized thing. I like maps when they do that. And Parkin would do that. He'd have like a, he'd have like a map of Boulogne and there'd be a big bunch of grapes. And, and I was like, hey, that could be really great if the map, if I had a map and then every one of these little landmarks was something to do with one of the songs. And then the map could be like the shape of my face and it all came together and we spent a lot of time working on it. It wasn't just as simple as me saying, Parky, do a map with my face. <laughs> a lot of meetings, we had to eat a lot of uh, burgers in order to get that sorted out. But we got it just in time for printing. He was still drawing stuff like the day before I had to send it to printers. And I said, oh, really? Parky, stop, because he kept on coming up with great stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, a joy because I've been looking for a way to get him involved for a long time. The trouble is if you do all your own artwork, like I do, if you if you do your artwork and you shoot your own videos and whatever, it's difficult, it's a challenge to stop yourself and let other people get involved, which is yeah. which is why, you know, I said, listen, I'm going to get Jen to do all the visual stuff of this record. I'm going to get Parky to do all the artwork instead of doing it myself and have it be the same again. I wanted a different vibe. I, obviously, um, yeah, like I said, they've got all the cool little little icons for them. Uh, is, is there a lot of thought going behind what each of them mean, or is it sort of loosely related to the songs? Or Yeah, some of them are more definite than others. Some of them, you know, um, let me think of one that couldn't have been anything else. Well, I mean, the ho hospital tree is, is quite well, an obvious uh, But originally he had a tree on fire, and I was like, yeah, unless that's like a statement about the state of the NHS, let's <laughs> not do that. I said, just look, give me, draw me a hospital, and then he drew a tree as well. So that's, those are pretty dead bang. But other ones are a little bit more, um, a little bit more nebulous, shall we say, like the, the broken down house for bad friends. You know, I love that. Is that bad friend? No, that's the ship, the broken ship for bad friends. Yes. That's not a, a nice metaphor. It's, it's the friendship. Exactly. Oh! oh! Can you swear on the radio? I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I just did. Nice one, buddy. Wow. There you go. You're blowing my mind here. <laughs> it's all got a plan that I didn't even realize. Great. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously um, it's a similar thing you did with Shuffle as well with the, the icons for, 
Yes, it is. But I mean, that's, you know, mm, yeah. You are a very perceptive individual and you've seen straight through. I'm like, this is totally new. Go two albums back and did exactly the same thing. Very um, cool still. I, it's, I, it's, it is it is different. I think Shuffle's very, like, simplified like, it's icons. It's a variation on a theme. Shuffle was about my love of logograms and, um, you know, distilling a complex uh, uh, philosophical point into a symbol, you know, a, a one-line drawing, as it were. And this is slightly different, yeah. But, you know, they, they do come from the same tree because that's a game that I love to play. Um, and there's an, album, there's an album by Madness, actually, that no one knows when they, it's sort of a weird spin-off with only four of the members called The Madness. And they did a similar thing for their album. Each song had a different sort of logo slash illustration. And I really love when people go, go into that sort of depth with things. You know, being a designer, being an illustrator, that's what speaks to me. And Parkin was into it too. You know, he couldn't stop himself. He's like, what about a rubber duck? And I was like, we've run out of songs. And he's like, but that could be one of them. Like, no. Try another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously the latest single from it, uh, from, from the album is uh, Lena Don't Leave Me. Yeah. Of course. And that is, of course, about your wife. Yes, yes. So I've, I've uh, seen a little clip about, uh, of you talking about the lyrics and the meaning behind it. But, but tell us a little bit about the sort of thought behind it. Uh, well, the, I mean, the lyrics or the song? Uh, the, well, uh, both. Oh, okay. the, the whole thing in general. Well, do you know, um, I thought it, it was the song was a sort of thought experiment to see if I could write one of those. You've got all these sort of 80s power ballads that, that are the name of a woman, you know, just these like beardy guys shouting a woman's name and then saying. And it's usually about like how long her legs are, you know, <laughs> usually pretty reductive. And so I thought... Wouldn't it be first of all, wouldn't it be interested to write one of those songs, right? You know, with that kind of structure and a big guitar solo and whatever and all the harmonies like Rainbow or Toto. And but then when I got it, I was like, well, it's got to be about an amazing woman. Right. But you can't be like, you look so sexy spread on my car. You know, we don't really <laughs> live on, in that kind of society anymore. Thank God. <laughs> so I thought, well, the only answer is to then is to write a song about an amazing woman, but try and not objectify her. Right try and sing about all the things that make her amazing as a person, a beautiful inside and out. And the most amazing woman person that I know is my wife, uh, uh, Lena. But that's not her real name, that's her professional name, but her real name wouldn't scan quite so well. So <laughs> I used Lena. And, uh, and then just wrote it all about, you know, how I feel about it and what it really feels to, to have another half, which is sort of slang for, you know, when you get married to someone, but that's how we feel is that the other person we're only really complete when the other person is around. And, you know, when I'm doing a press junket like this, which is, you know, what this is, I've been doing these interviews, you know, wall to wall the past couple of weeks. Everyone's very complimentary and everyone says, hey, it's so great. And we're talking about, you know, how clever I am to have written this record or whatever. And, and the song's so great. Whenever I get a compliment like that, I feel like I need to save half of it for her, because even though she didn't. She didn't write the muse record. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's just that she's half of me. If you think I'm cool, then really you think she's cool as well. We're the same person. And the same goes the other way. You know, she is um, a subject of huge admiration for her work, you know, as a performer, but also as a producer. And she does all kinds of uh, cool stuff. And when people think, man, she's cool, they're also sort of thinking, oh, man, he's cool as well, without realizing it. We come as a partnership, and that's only uh, ever visible. Every now and then, I go and help her at her shows, and she's in that video. And so in that video, with the both of us together on the beach and in all the photos, that's when you see the whole picture. The rest of the time, in this interview we're doing, or on my album cover, you don't really see the whole picture. So that was nice. God, I've been rambling. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. I suppose the, like, the sort of thing behind it is that both of you have grown to who you are because of each other in a way, haven't you? Absolutely, yeah. We start, Like I said in that video, we, we started as separate people and, and we've grown to become one uh, organism, really. Kind of gross. <laughs> <Isn't that? laughs> Nice. Well, what's uh, uh, quite nice about it as well, obviously, um, Don't Die uh, is uh, another song. That's, it's, it's, it's sort of like a more like emo sort of young sort of thing thing to it in a way. Like um, you're sort of talking about how you, you don't want someone to, to leave you, but like more of a like, I would be nothing without you. Whereas with this song, it seems more like a um, like a positive thing. So sort of like you, you hold each other up. 
Sorry. For sure. You, I mean, it's like a progression from it. That's a deep cut. Don't die. Has yeah, there ever released? That's on the the uh, the rare. Go to university. Right, right, right. Should have gone to university. Well, it's funny because "Don't Die" is sort of the, it is the the approach from the start of that relationship. I wrote "Die" when our relationship was very young, yeah, maybe maybe 20, 20 years ago. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Really? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And then Lena is is how that feels twenty years down the line. Yeah, that's Oops. what I mean. It's it's like a real progression sort of thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the sentiment is the same, but how it expressed maybe has changed. I mean, well done for um, shit. You know, are you doing a degree in this? Fuck. Well done <laughs> for the line between those two. I'm impressed. Yeah, I mean, I I've, I I am a big fan. Obviously, um, it's I've been very much looking forward to this this interview. So, uh, I've also got to pull out the thing. There's probably loads of stuff I could talk about, but my mind just went completely blank. <laughs> trying okay, to write stuff. That's fine, it happens to us all. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, anyway, with the uh, with the album, have you got a favorite track from from the album, or is it? Um... Yeah, I would say my favorite track from the album is a track called "This Town Will Never Let Us Go." which is, um, I, it feels like the soul of the record to me. The, the first half, you, you'll hear this when you get it, the first half is like absolutely chock-a-block, it's all hits. It's hit after hit after hit, like poppy, sort of uh, positive sounding, you know, radio bangers, as it were. And then the second half, it, things get a bit more thoughtful. The songs get a bit longer, you know, we start to dip into a more melancholy area and this town will never let us go, really is... It's sort of my um, Eleanor Rigby, if you will. Paul okay. sitting there, you know, thinking about people who have it tough and, and trying as best he can to, to empathise. And, and, and this is me doing the same, really trying to empathise with people in uh, difficult situations. Yeah. OK, I, yeah, I, I say I've, I've obviously pre-ordered the album, uh, so I will definitely check out for that one. For that one, yeah. That's uh, And obviously that's why, one way I saw that it was your birthday coming up as well from the nice email we got this morning. Oh, did you get your... your I, I uh, did. Um, which, which track was it? Um, I've written it down here. It's the, this is all there is. So the first track, I think, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to come hard out the gates. And then we've been opening the shows with that one. I think it's, you know, it's quite immediate. And people sort of go, what? And then we play talk hard. And they're like, oh, I remember. Okay, this <laughs> Um, well, uh, obviously, you, you have got a, a busy month there coming up. Obviously, you said your birthday, you've got the album coming out. And also, I had a nice delivery uh, yesterday. For some reason, the Royal Mail delivered at about six o'clock at night. I don't know what's going on there, but yeah. um, I got a nice copy of the pilot EP. Oh, my God. You, I have not I've got, got everything. Those. Have you everyone, not? Everyone on the internet, like, look what I got in the mail. And I'm like, hey, yeah. wait a minute, Mr. Postman. I got nothing. This I've, I felt the same. Like, I saw the people posting them. I'm like, it's like middle of the afternoon like surely it would have come by now but Mate, yeah it's six o'clock where i come from we call that lair i can't believe you've got did you get all the stuff with it all the like the mail out and the flyers and whatnot i think i just got the record and the t-shirt oh uh, what from the label yeah uh, or, is it, or is it inside I've, I've not put it on yet okay maybe, so it, maybe maybe it's inside the package we put like all uh flyers and posters with it and whatnot if you don't get them raise hell all right, I'm on it. <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, you you must be happy to see those old old tunes pressed to vinyl. Yeah, I, I, well, I am. I was a bit trepidatious. It was sort of um, it wasn't really my idea. There there was a guy that had been emailing us for years saying he wanted to put Pilot out on a vinyl, and we were like, yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. Um, but then it didn't happen for some reason. And then uh, I found, I mean, this is all in the press release, but I found a, a dat tape of five more songs. Um, so I was like, oh, hey, if we did, because the question was, if we put Pilot out on a vinyl, it's only four or five songs, you know, yeah. what are we going to put on the other side? And here's the fucking answer, you know, we've got five more songs by the same lineup, you know, with our original drummer, Mark Lawton. That sort of bumps it up to an album. So that uh, answered a, a problem for us. And we thought, oh, great, we can go, you know, 12 inch with this sucker. And it was sort of, you know, for the fans, because I'm aware that there's um, a big fan base still out there, still listening to this records and still buying them um i knew it would we knew it would make people happy but what i didn't expect was it to be actually good i know this sounds like a, <laughs> a second thought because because i sort of i haven't listened to pilot for a long time right yeah and it's quite embarrassing because it's very teenage you know we were still i was still in school when we made it um, yeah, i think you said the lyrics um that were written on the back of a activity pack weren't they they were yes the, we, well i found them the label asked me if i'd write, handwrite some lyrics to give away 
And I was like, can't really be bothered. So I found, <laughs> instead, I found the original lyrics when I wrote them out when I was 16. And uh, they were on the back of like a school activity day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, so, so what I mean by this is I thought that it had more value as maybe, a, let's face it, nostalgia or maybe scientific value, right? Rather than like an actually good record that you would want to put on and play because it sounds good. But then when I got the vinyl masters, because we had to remaster it, I got the test pressing. I put it on because I had to listen through to check there was no clicks or pops. I found myself digging it. I found myself vibing to it. Unexpectedly, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would because it sounded great. And yeah. so now I can sort of stand behind it and say, you know, and I put up a little video to say, don't just buy this because nostalgia, buy it because it's actually a good record. I, I stand behind it and say, you know what? Some funky lyrics aside, this is a good <laughs> record that is worth your money. That's yeah. the, the topmost concern that we have, you know, the guys from Ruben, whenever we put out a reissue or something, and that I put out when I put a record now is like, is it worth people's money? Because especially with the cost of living and whatnot, you know, you can just listen to it for free on Spotify if you want. Why should you fork out, you know, 15, 20 quid on this thing? And the reason is because it's good. You know, we make it with care. We, we dig around for the old photos. The photos on the inlay are photos that I hadn't seen since they were taken. I didn't know they existed. We, we absolutely bust our balls every time to make sure that you get something that's worth your money so yeah, that's the thing it's, it's nice to have an actual vinyl as well there's something special about it isn't there i'm a collector as well that's why i want mine god damn it yeah. <laughs> you got the test pressing uh, you just haven't got the artwork i suppose test pressing's away nightmare i didn't get to keep those no you know what? no 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 oh. like the label god damn <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I, I've, I'd say hopefully it will come come in the post today, tomorrow. You know, so mine came at six o'clock, so okay, someone might turn up at seven o'clock, banging on your door. I think. Yeah, there's hope. Also. Yeah, hope. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously you have had a, a short run of um, of shows. Obviously, I saw you in Southampton. Yeah. Um, uh, you've also got Len Mania three coming up. Yes, Len Manchester. Manchester, uh, that's got an incredible lineup as well. Hasn't it? Yeah, I was just looking. Oh, yes, I got the press shots through. Yeah, it's, uh, obviously James and the Cold Gun are playing. I'm a big fan of them. Saint Agnes as well. Yes, yeah, Saint Agnes. I know them very well. We share. We've got a lot of mutual friends. Yeah, that's going to be good. I, I, I'm contemplating it, although it's it's a little bit further than Southampton hey, from Bristol. Come so. on, what else do you do in the week before Christmas? Nothing. Exactly. It's all wound up. Yeah. Making a road trip, man. We're doing exactly. a road trip from fucking. Sorry, I saw. We do uh, a road trip from Guildford on the day and then back on the day. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Okay, okay. I've I've got a gig on the on the night before, but then I just so like, have I. Get, get an early night. No excuse, me. <laughs> Wrap it up. All right, all right. I'll be there. <laughs> Great. Um, you've also uh, what else? You've got Takedown Festival as well. Yes. I've you just got my ticket for that as well. Are you is that? Do I see the fist on your shirt there? No, this is a Led by Lanterns oh, that's a uh, shirt. But... There's so many fists. Yeah, yeah too many out. fists. Fists everywhere. <laughs> they did, but that's like April, right? That's April, a lot. April, yeah. Fifth yeah, or eighth, something like that. I'm trying not to think about it. I can <laughs> so far ahead yeah. Yeah. um but uh so uh, outside outside of those though have you got any more headline tours sort of plans with the album or well we've got two more headline dates next week i think it is yeah. um in is it next week yeah it is we're going to st albans and we're going to hartford which is exciting for me because i've never played either town before oh, really? i think i've been to st albans i don't think i've played it and hartford didn't even know it existed until a couple of weeks ago that's great <laughs> So I'm very excited to see, you know, who will turn up. That's always the question. Who's who's going to be there? Um, I think and, you were surprised by Southampton, weren't you, the, the turn up there? Well, dude, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not going to... I don't think Southampton was was sold out, right? But it, there was a lot well, of... People... I, I managed to get a ticket, the, like, about an hour before. Sure. Show so it wasn't, it wasn't sold out. But there was a healthy turnout. And in the climate we currently have, we're still... The live industry is still feeling the effects of, of COVID, right? Mm. We're still cautious about coming out and we're slowly rebuilding that up. So I'm going to these shows not knowing who will turn up. Some of the shows on the King of Clubs tour at the end of last year, that was during the last little wave of, I think it was Delta. Some of them were very sparsely attended, like 20, 30 people. They were still great shows, mm. but um, you never know who's going to turn up. So Southampton really took me by surprise. And, and now I'm going to towns where I don't even really have a following as far yeah. as I know. Who's going to show up? I am, you know, yeah. 
be me playing to the sound engineer and we're still have a rocking time but hey, we've all been there <laughs> so um you know i've done gigs to less people that doesn't phase me at all i just i like playing anyway so yeah very excited about that and then yeah in the new year i want to do a much more substantial um album tour go all the way up to scotland all the way down to cornwall you know really get around the the island at least uh, and then we'll do all the festivals you won't be able to get rid of me next year you, <laughs> you think you've seen a lot of my face this year you ain't seen nothing yet uh are you the important thing with that though are you going to come to bristol because the bristol show got cancelled on the um king of club store didn't it they're so sad the bristol show cancelled and the glasgow show got cancelled so sad of course i'm going to come to bristol of course i am yeah I don't think the tickets are transferable. I think everyone got refunds. No, I think we got refunds, yeah. Thank God. That would be hard. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> You're waiting. Well, there, there, are, there are some shows. I mean, I, I bought tickets for 100 Reasons about four years ago, I think. Right. So that's that's happening in oh, January, on. hopefully. But yeah, of course we're going back to Bristol. Bristol's always been a great town for me. And I got lots of friends there as well. And Glasgow, another great town for me. We'll get there. Don't you worry. All right, good, good. Well, I'll see you there. Well, I'll, I'll see you before anyway, because apparently I'm going to every other show that you've played. Yeah, <laughs> well, um, obviously, thanks so much for your uh, for your time coming on the show today. Uh, obviously, it means me so much um, for you to come on here. Uh, good luck with the album. Good luck with the birthday. Uh, ha have a good time. Thanks, Enjoy Bob. your wooden cake. Yes, mm, delicious. Uh, we um so we're gonna play a track off the new album. So this show is gonna come out go out before the album comes out. So um we we sort of got talk hard, Lena, don't leave me, or um possibly I could play the play. Uh, this is all there is. Which which do you think? Which well, this is all that there is. It's got swearing. Are you allowed to put swearing? I on can, I can do what I want. Bang it, bang it, mate. This is all there is. It's a radio radio raver. Do it. All right. Well, go ahead. If you want to go ahead and introduce it, then. Oh, hey everyone, I'm Jamie Lemon. This is the, the lead track from my new album, The Atheist. It's called This Is All There Is. Enjoy. <laughs> 